I think I did 134 episodes by the end of the uh, 96 season. Uh, I may be a little off, but and that's seven years all told. It was when he said, as he always said, sometime around episode 13 or 14 of every year, um, I don't think I'm, I, you know, I want to come back next year. And usually I would say, well, you'll see how you feel about it, all the while thinking, I'll talk him into it. He should actually have a job talking people out of suicide when they're on a ledge, because he's very good at it. He's very calm. He knows exactly what to say. Yeah, no, your life will get better. Just come off the ledge. Everything will be fine. But now I just physically didn't, didn't want to do it anymore. I just felt like I, I just can't, uh, I, I can't, I just couldn't do another one. I don't know. I just had come to the end. Um, so I was hoping that everybody would feel the same way, but I was the only one. It was time for him to do what he wanted to do, whatever that was, whether it was just not do the show or do something else. And God knows he had poured his whole life into it. And I honestly don't know, and I, I wouldn't even ask him how much... I, I know what he would say. I would say, I would, I would ask him, how much of the show did you really want to do? And he would probably say the pilot. But uh, I'm sure he's glad that uh, he went past that. Jerry is the one who made the announcement that Larry wouldn't be coming back. And, um, and that I think, I think it was at that same time he said that we would be coming back, however. I was very concerned about not having Larry there. I knew we were losing a great writer a visionary. I was concerned about what would happen to the show in general, um, what would certainly happen to George in specific. I, you know, Larry was George, George was Larry, <clears throat> and without him there to, to guide the George stories and the George reactions, I anticipated that it wouldn't be quite the same character, and I, and I think it wasn't quite the same character. But I had all the faith in Jerry. I knew that Jerry would not continue that show if he didn't think we could make it happen. I have such funny feelings about it because uh, at this, as, as much as I felt kind of hurt and upset because I loved working with him and felt that we had this great chemistry that was uh, so magical, um, it was probably the best thing that ever happened to me. I was surprised that Jerry had decided to go on, uh, but I felt also that everybody had a, a personal uh, issue that they had to work out. Uh, like, I had to go work out my issue and go find myself in a way. Larry eventually had to leave and kind of face the world without the structure of the show to blame on all the problems in his life. And Jerry, to some degree, I think also needed to sort of uh, uh, know for himself the role that he played on the show creatively. And I think he needed to explore and express that also. It was an amazing challenge those last two years. It was so exciting and because it was, I was really undertaking a crazy thing to write and star in 22 episodes of a show that people are, you know, really anxiously awaiting each week, it would have been quite the, uh, quite the fall from grace if, if I had let it uh, crumble. So uh, he, it re he really gave me a chance to uh, do the thing that I'm most proud of, which is that I, I learned how to do it really under him all those years. Larry taught us everything. I mean, because the sixth season and the seventh season, when it was your script, uh, you got to go on the floor with Larry. You got to sit in the editing room with Larry. You got to go to the sound mix with Larry. And so we learned how to edit, and we learned how to sound mix, and we were doing the casting, and, and you're on the floor and blocking and stuff. So we got experience that most sitcom writers on most sitcoms don't get at all. And so when Larry left, you're just sort of going to the same thing. You're, you know, you're going, to the same places your dad used to take you to, he's just not there anymore. I look back on it now as the greatest gift among many gifts that he gave me was he kind of pushed me out of the nest at the very end to do the thing on your own. You can do it, even though I don't know if uh, he thought that that's what I was going to do, but that is the way it worked out. And, uh, I'm, you know, so I'm always grateful to him for that, that uh, he gave me that last step of growth. And then when the show was over, I really felt like, well, you know, I'm, uh, I, I went from really nothing to something. The weirdest feeling I had was 
was when uh, it was in August. It was the day they were filming the, fir the first show without me, that day. And I was, I had an office in Castle Rock. I am sitting there in my office by myself, and uh, I'm trying to write this movie, and there's nobody to talk to, and I'm sitting there by myself, and I'm going, geez, they're doing the first show today. Boy, they're all getting ready now, and oh my God, look at me, what have I done? <laughs> I'm sitting here by myself, I should be with my friends over there. What am I doing here? Am I, am I crazy? What did you do, you stupid idiot? How could you have left that show to sit here by yourself and write this? What, what are you, nuts? And I just kept berating myself. And then I got like very depressed that night. You know, And then they were filming. And a few hours later, they started to film. And I'm thinking, they're filming right now. I'm here. How could they do that? How dare they do that? You know? And then I started to get mad that they were doing it. And uh, it, was, it, was a, it was difficult, um, but I, I, I got over that. And, and, uh, <clears throat> and then periodically, I, w I would go there that, that year to, uh, to do Steinbrenner. I heard about what happened at the meeting this morning. Oh, uh, yes. I already packed up my desk, sir, so I can be out of here in an hour. And I have to tell you, it's exactly what this organization needed. <laughs> If we want to look to the future, we've got to tear down the past. Babe Ruth was nothing more than a fat old man with little girl legs. And here's something I just found out recently. He wasn't really a sultan. Huh? What do you make of that? Hey, check this out. Lou Gehrig's pants. Not a bad fit. Hey, you don't think that nerve disease of his was contagious, do you? Uh, better take him off. I'm too important to this team. Big Stein can't be flopping and twitching. And it was weird because... I didn't, I didn't write the lines. So I was doing like Steinbrenner lines that I, I didn't write. And, um, and I felt like, gee, what, I, I don't belong here anymore. <laughs> I'm not part of this. I, I've, I've got to get out of here. This is, it's all wrong. It was a, such a weird feeling, even, you know, driving through the gate. Um, Larry David, you know. Oh, hold on, you know, they're calling up to see if I can see if I can get into the studio. You don't understand! You see that show? I created that thing!